Each week at Grace Bible Church, we participate in communion to remember the saving grace provided to us through the faith that we have to believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus. This morning, we want to recall and consider Christ's work on the cross. We're going to look at Philippians 3, 7 through 9. If you do not have a Bible, please raise your hand. We will provide one for you. And if you do not own a Bible, you may take this one with you. Philippians 3, 7 through 9. Let's pray together. Father, we are so thankful to be a part of your saving grace. Your word and your grace are sufficient for every situation and trial in our lives. We look to your word this morning to remember who we were before Christ and also the changed lives that we have because of Christ's redeeming work on the cross. We thank you for the everlasting and unconditional love you have for your children. We are privileged to be a part of your family and of this church and, and to share in the righteousness of your son. In Jesus' name, amen. So Philippians 3, 7 through 9. Please read with me, please. But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish, so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. This passage is referring to Paul's testimony of what was going on in his heart as he remembered his conversion. When I first started to meditate on this, uh, on these verses for this message, I was reminded of, the, of Jesus' words in Mark 8, 34 through 37. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Jesus is talking about an exchange, about losing something to gain something. John MacArthur says this, if you want to gain your soul, it will cost you your life. But if you desire to save your life, it will cost you your soul. In other words, if you hold on to the things that to you are precious and reject the things that to God are precious, it will cost you your eternal soul. That's the exchange. Jesus said, what good is it if you have gained everything the world has to offer and, lo and lost your eternal soul? You would be much better off to make an exchange of what you have in this life for what God offers you in the life to come. Whatever exchange you need to make to gain your eternal soul, you ought to do that. In our passage today in Philippians 3, 7, Paul simil similarly says, but whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Paul recalls these things that he counts as lost. They are listed in verses 5 and 6 and include being circumcised on the eighth day as a Jew, a citizen of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, a Pharisee found blameless in the law. Paul is now considering these things as worthless from a spiritual standpoint because none of, it can be, none of it can be used to gain salvation. None of these things can redeem your soul. In verse 7, Paul not only accounts these things as lost, but in verse 8, he considers these things as rubbish in order that he 
may gain Christ. The word rubbish refers to either garbage, something that's thrown away, or something that is useless, something that is rejected. Paul is saying all of, all of the things that he once thought were worthy to gain favor with God, he now considers worthless. He gladly gave it all up. This is similar to the salvation experience of every believer. A genuine believer is a person who is willing to pay or give up whatever God requires, no matter what the cost, and is willing to abandon everything for Christ. As Paul puts it, to live is Christ. A true believer lives by faith alone through Christ alone. Philippians 9, 3, 9 says, Not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. Salvation is accepting his sacrifice for our sins and relying completely on his work on the cross on our behalf. It is a total and complete dependence and trust in Jesus Christ alone to enter God's kingdom. If you are here today and have not made this exchange, please consider the things that you're holding on to versus having the righteousness of Christ. It is his righteousness that will allow you to be with him in heaven, not yours. Please consider again Paul's words that all he had accomplished prior to being saved was worthless when compared to knowing Christ. Communion is a time to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for all who believe. If you are a believer, please, if you are not a believer, please allow the elements to pass you by. Believers, please use this time to recall how the blood of Christ rescued you from the domain of darkness and transferred you to his eternal kingdom. Examine your heart, and if you're holding on to unconfessed sin, please repent and seek God's forgiveness. Use this time to praise and thank God for his grace in your life. Men, come and serve us. You may take communion on your own when you are ready. I'll be back in a few minutes to close our time in prayer.